Okay, today we are going to talk about hip impingement. Sure, it's a term a lot of you have heard before where there is a pinch or something weird when you're trying to rotate your hip or flex your, your thigh towards your rib cage and you just feel something in there that doesn't feel quite right. Well, we're gonna talk about what that is today. So many times it's due to the, what's femoral acetabular impingement, which is a growth of extra bone on the hip. So this guy is known as a cam lesion on the neck of your femur or your thigh bone. This is known as a pincer lesion and it's basically um, around the head of your femur, there's a cone-like cartilage object called a uh, labrum and basically part of that turns into a bony spur. So you get this extra bone growth due to the, all this extra force going into your hips. Uh, particularly if you played soccer, baseball, or taekwondo when you were younger. Guys are about 800% more likely to get this uh, if you're active uh, compared to somebody that had a less active childhood, women, almost 200%. But basically that pinch on the front of your hip is often these guys running into each other. Okay, now oftentimes it's bringing the thigh straight to the rib cage. Boom, we run into a problem and it's usually a mix between uh, a soft tissue problem. So uh, muscles on the back of the hip or down here that connect the, to the hip uh, aren't able to stretch out, driving these things into each other, causing some pain. Or perhaps you just don't have certain range of motion where bringing the thigh to the rib cage here doesn't really work, but you can externally rotate. So kind of like this frog leg kind of thing and rotate out here and you've got all the room in the world. This is super common, particularly among those active people. And the trouble is a lot of people believe that if I just stretch my way through it, because this is what we've been taught as a do it yourself kind of thing. If I just stretch my way into it, I'm going to gain some range of motion. This will be fine. Wow. You could gain range of motion. How you're doing it is something you're not going to want to hear about because what you're really doing is wearing down the cartilage that protects your joints. And so these guys basically are scraping the cartilage on the inner surface of your joints and the, the ball of your femur here. And so by the time you get into your fifties or sixties, you basically have no cartilage left and uh, you need a new hip, which as many of you know, isn't all that uncommon. So what to do if you have this extra bone growth? One, don't challenge the range of motion, AKA bring these suckers together. So if you're noticing this pinch and you have particularly healthy muscles, note, you must have healthy muscles uh, for this to be a necessity. Uh, but if everything else is healthy and the only problem is this, then it's going to be, hey, I'm not going to take a narrow stance squat. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to keep these suckers away from each other so I can have healthy range of motion. But what if you haven't seen anybody and you're like, well, what can I do? That's when you need to see a soft tissue specialist or somebody that knows about the body and say, hey, are the things on the back side of my hip here, back where my fingers are, are those stretching out to allow this to happen? Because if they don't, basically you're going to drive this, the head of your femur into the joint and you're going to wear out that cartilage. It's not really going to be a problem of the muscles in the front. So oftentimes we blame our hip flexor that starts up here and plugs in down here. We blame the hip flexor for the pinch on the front, but really it's the stuff on the backside that's not stretching out, causing the pinch in the front, causing this pain. So if that sounds like you, or you have this chronic thing, it could be that you just have unhealthy uh, adductor muscles and hip capsules causing that. And you don't have this at all, but you're not gonna know for certain without either imaging or uh, the, the opinion of a very smart expert when it comes to joint muscle and nerve health, like myself. So hopefully you found this rather educational. And if this sounds like you and it's been bothering you, maybe, if we work on the muscles around it, you won't have these symptoms at all. And otherwise, there's ways you can plan to have a life where you just avoid certain movements where you'll still be able to do a lot of what you enjoy. All right, thanks for watching.